Today we're gonna play some top games that are available for classic Mac OS 9.2 and we'll see how they behave on the Power Mac G4, the configuration right over here. And we're gonna play that with the classical hockey puck Apple mouse. Not my first choice, but let's do the full retro experience. So the first game is StarCraft and this is the first time I'm starting it for the Mac OS, this edition. So yeah, I do not have a modem on this one, so let's boot it up. And we are presented with the intro, so this is produced by Blizzard. And a great thing that I always loved with Blizzard, at least for the 90s, their CGI's, intros, cutscenes are pretty impressive, especially for that time. Remember, this is 20 something years ago. Even with this resolution, they look awesome. So I was looking forward really back in the time for this game and seeing such an intro, especially being a science fiction fan, so I would consume any of the science fiction movies possible. I still think that today, if they made a movie with this topic, so the StarCraft, like they did with the Warcraft movie, I, I, I would just love it straight away, regardless of the critics. Okay, but let's skip right into the game. So, I'm gonna choose single player, let's just enter the name, and we're gonna be quite straightforward into the single player mode. And we can choose from the episodes, so unlike with StarCraft 2, you can play all three classes, all three races right away. And we also have a multiplayer, so a skirmish mode where you can play against bots, just to practice. But let's go proceed to the single player with Terran. So the back premise, this was intention I believe from Blizzard just to make a Warcraft in space. So initially when you have humans and orcs, we have here Terran, which are human in the 25th century, colonizing the galaxy. And you have Zerk, which would be like orcs with addition of Protoss, like super intelligent race. Now with every mission I do like that you are introduced with some intel, so it adds to the story. We're gonna skip this tutorial because I still remember some comments from over 20 years ago. I, I really did spend a lot of time on this game. So let's start with the first mission. I'm surprised that it loads really fast, so almost instantly. Okay, we get tips. Okay, so I don't know how to use this hockey puck mouse with only one button. Thank you for this Mac OS edition. Now this game runs in 640 by 480 resolution, which is really low resolution. And Blizzard even made a remastered edition like a couple years ago, which you can buy. And they released the original StarCraft completely for free. So you can go ahead and download it if you want to play it. I don't know if the battle scene, battle net scene is still active, as in you can play multiplayer with it, with that free version, but still, the single player is quite good. I mean, really good, especially for that time. I believe that this game is personally, for me, much better than a lot of modern new games. So when comparing it with Command and Conquer or later Red Alert from that time. I did really like that you had a limit on the number of units you can use, regardless of the race that you, you are playing with. This added a lot strategical aspect of the game. Yeah, but back, I was really surprised that there is a lot of community back in the time with StarCraft that there were competitions with really good prices. So if you were a top-notch player, even 20 something years ago, you could be a pro gamer back in the time when that was just a laughable matter. Anyway, let's continue playing this game a little bit. This should be just a couple minutes of playing for this first mission without the intro. We just have to build barracks, recruit a couple of marines and that's it. And Raynor has to survive. Okay, I'm gonna skip a little bit forward, I just have to build one marine more. And the mission is complete. Let's just explore a little bit around the map. As I said, this is on easy. So, 
that this was quick. I like the reports after the mission ends. Especially this is very useful when you're playing multiplayer either with your friends or on Battle.net just to brag around how you beat them. And back in the time you can even play this in LAN so through IPX connection I still remember LAN parties where we hooked up our computers through a hub or even through old coaxial cables. That was really slow network but for some RTS that was more than enough. Okay, let's end this, as this is just for the showcase, I'll for sure play this later on more. And the best good that you can get with StarCraft is the Star Edit. So this is a tool with which you can create your own maps. So you can play skirmish, so against bots, so the AI, or with your friends on the network, on the battle net, etc. And I don't know why other games, modern games, do not use this anymore. And the tool was quite straightforward, there was no need for some special tutorials, you just pick items, put it on the map and save it and straight away you could load those maps in the game. So yeah, just again to mention, I don't know why, why developers, so the game builders provide this anymore, so a way to build your own maps, create your own mods, etc. Anyway, just for the conclusion, really fun game one of the top 90 games by my opinion and it runs really smooth on this configuration so everything loads almost instantly and you can even play that game on the lower spec configurations. So the second game for this video is Fallout and if you're a fan of post nuclear topics this is the right game for you. So the backstory, nuclear war has happened and you've been saved in a vault and you pop out couple hundred years later and see in what ruins the world is. All of the drawings, the music is in the 50s style, so the Cold War era and I absolutely love this kind of stuff. Even if you played the newer Fallout games and you're deep into this story of Fallout and you are too young to play playing this one, I do encourage you to try it out. Regardless of the isometric view, so it is not 3D and the low resolution, it is really awesome. So let's create a character, I'm just gonna pick Albert and let's modify it. The character building is evolved around the special system, so strength, endurance, charisma, intelligence, etc. And you can add additional skills and traits. So the backstory for the first fallout is that you have to find the water chip, you have a limited time of 150 days in game of course, or you lost the game. Actually back in the time I started to play Fallout 2 and later on I returned back to Fallout 1 just because of the impressions of the Fallout 2. As there is not a lot of difference between those two games, just a different story, little upgrades and such. I mean overall it's very easy going game. There is a quite a lot of conversation, but also action. And the beauty of this game is that you do not have to follow all of the missions. You can go completely vigilante and kill everyone and still complete the game. Or you can be a passive player and just talk, avoid any confrontations, etc. and still finish the game. There are a lot of characters, with some you can talk or not, some just have like automatic responses, some give you quests. And when you meet guys like that, where they have animated faces, you know they are important regarding the game. But still, you can just say to them, duck off and continue with your own thing around the game. Or you can play along and complete the missions they give you. Anyway, great topic for the game. The Fallout community is today very much alive, even new versions are being published and being developed, so a good thing. And as I said, if you didn't play it, take a look back and see how it all started. And especially if you are into vintage retro computers, this is a game with low requirements, so you can play even on older computers than I'm playing on. Okay, the third game for this video is Diablo 2. Another game from Blizzard and another game that I started playing 
with the second edition so I got to the Diablo 1 after that so again the blizzard didn't disappoint over here with the intros all of the animations are awesome made and just the dark story behind the diablo appealed to a lot of audience so different to the fallout or some other classic rpgs this is just a hack and slash it just simplifies the rpg it just concentrates on killing as much mobs bosses all the creatures it added the action aspect to the gaming. So in the original Diablo 2 you can choose between 5 classes. I played with all of them back in time, multiple times maxed out all of the characters. So let's start this time with the Barbarian. The load times on these configurations are quite fast. And we are straight in the game and we're gonna proceed with our first mission yeah it is just to clean up that cave so yeah let's go and explore okay the mac edition didn't provide us over here how to use like the right click button mouse but we'll get a hang of it i do believe it is with the command okay still nothing in my stash so yeah i'm a weakling over here so let's go outside and find that cave i don't know if you're noticing but over here i have some warping uh, in the graphics I mean it is a little bit more Beware regarding the requirements the for the hardware with Diablo 2 than with Starcraft or Fallout 2 that we covered but I don't think this should ha be happening according to the system requirements and on what machine I'm running this let's find our first enemy come on I'm just gonna follow that path I find it very interesting that with Diablo you had random generated terrains so each time you would play it would be a different experience. No way you could have generated two times the same environment as in all the pets and all of the caves are on different positions etc. I mean it is running pretty smooth on this machine but still there there is some glitching on the preview. So yeah, let's kill all the monsters over here. This game also runs only in the 640 by 480 resolution. Later on that was upgraded with the expansion the Lord of Destruction uh, to 800 by 600. And Blizzard even released after the remastered version so you could play on modern machines with widescreen, high resolutions, etc. Our first heavy battle, let's call it like that with a lot of enemies i mean this is not a lot what what happens later in the game and so we had a little glitch over here as in the game was stuck just for the part of the second again i mean regarding the requirements and the configuration around this this should be happening at all but i mean this is the 1.0 version so i didn't catch anything didn't install lord of destruction over here if you're a fan of RPGs, I mean even complex ones, this hack and slash does bring a lot of it. And if you're having classical Mac OS or even modern computer, I do recommend you to play this game. I know I'm gonna lose much more time, even 20 years later to play it. And of course you can start with Diablo 1 and then continue to Diablo 2 as it is also present for the classical Mac OS. Okay, and our first game that has a little bit higher hardware requirements and that is Unreal Tournament. Really love to play that game as I was a fan of the original Unreal and this was just made more of a like multiplayer game. Of course you can play a single player and a skirmish just against bots but still the main purpose was to play on internet and in network. It is taking quite some time to load, so we'll see how this performs on this configuration. Okay, the first look, so the intro animation, which is 3D rendered, looks pretty good. I mean, it is running quite smoothly. And we are in the menu, which I must say I do not like. I mean, this Windows style presentation, not, not, not my cup of tea. And we're gonna leave all of the preferences at high detail the maximum resolution I can get 
for this game so 124 by 768 and let's start a new tournament so yeah let's create our character I mean the game looks quite clean yeah I mean total difference between the previous games which had a cap on resolution on 640 by 480 this works like a charm we're gonna play a death match yeah I mean I just started this game for the first time I'm gonna skip the tutorial and let's play it let's see how it performs Blake is our enemy I don't know. We'll see how I'll perform as I'm playing with that one button mouse, the mechanical one. <laughs> okay, I see same glitches as with Diablo 2. I don't know if this is just a maybe driver issue. Uh, okay, uh, it, it is really hard to play with that mouse. No precision at all and I'm dead. Yeah, yeah, you nailed me. And I nailed you back. Okay, and you stole my gun. Okay, I'm already having fun, considering I'm playing this 20 years later. Not for the first time, but for, for the first time on the classical Mac OS. Ah, this mouse is killing me, not blink. Okay, I, I think uh, I'm gonna adapt. But overall, I, I'm surprised by the fra frame rate. Th this, is, this is running really smooth. Die blink, come on. Okay. I hope I'm gonna win this and I have rocket launcher okay let's go I'm now totally distracted by the gameplay die Blake die Blake die Blake come on come on I, I'm playing with a handicap with that mouse there you go Rocket launcher is always my preference. I, mean, I, I do not have a scroll over here to even switch weapons, and I'm playing with uh, arrow keys. I didn't switch switch this in the preferences. Yeah, yeah. I'm making a little bit hard this for me. Just the default preferences on the high details. I mean, yeah, yeah. It this this runs really smooth. I mean, for this game, the graphics are great for that time. I mean, groundbreaking actually. I remember when I played this on my old Pentium in software mode, so no 3D acceleration card and I could get just a couple of frames on on low resolution and of course low details. I did win at the end, not a remarkable achievement for this level but still. Overall I'm really happy with the performance on this Power Mac for the Unreal Tournament totally playable. I mean, e even on the lower specs, this could be running smoothly. So yeah, another recommendation from me. And the last game for this video is Quake 3 and I think this is the one with the highest hardware requirements. The load was quite fast, so yeah, I'm surprised with this. I'm gonna put everything on the highest properties, I mean the highest that I'm allowed, so the resolution of the quality to the highest and let's see how this performs while playing. So let's start with the tier 0, so the easiest one, I'm gonna leave the default difficulty. It is taking some time to load, but yeah I mean this is not a surprise since we are having a mechanical hard drive, we'll see how it performs in game. You can see the frame rate on the top right. I mean, it does drop a little bit on higher detail scenes, but still playable. I used to play the Quake 3 a lot. I mean, I, I did play the most Quake 2, but I love the concept of Quake 3, which was an opponent of Unreal Tournament, so concentrated mainly on the multiplayer. Okay, since I played previously Unreal Tournament, I did get used to the mechanical mouse a little bit. So yeah, I'm improving, I'm improving. Or the bot for Quake 3 is worse than the ones that are in, in Unreal Tournament. Okay, and tier 1 was complete. We get more enemies now. I mean, the design of those enemies 
is is much much better by my opinion than the Unreal Tournament one especially when you play with other people just because of the distinction and even all of the weapons are I mean better balanced with Quake 3 let's play another map and again the frame rate is quite good playable the only issue I find is that texture seem grainy so like when you take photos with your mobile phone during the night I mean the frame rate drops sometimes below 20 FPS but most of the time it runs quite smoothly I mean I could lower down the details and the resolution and this would play seamless so yeah I think the Quake 3 was sugar at the end for this video so today this is a retro game but for me it looks like I was playing this yesterday <laughs> but already 20 years have passed and of course you can play a lot of more games on this configuration if you install the mac os x subscribe for more content like this and let me know what are your favorite games on the classic mac os and if you play them i don't know during the working hours during the break or if you were stuck with the apple computer and there were no large choices to pick from the games list see you in the next one